guys welcome back to my channel so if you're new here I'm Amy and today I'm gonna to be going through this massive folder which if you don't know it is everything that is to do with my business in terms of paperwork so I've got a contents at the start that's one of my recipes which I'm gonna be going through so I'm gonna go through all my spreadsheets I'm gonna go through the safe food better business so basically everything that you need to have ready for your inspection and yeah we're gonna get right into it if you haven't already please like and subscribe and we're gonna start with this folder and then I'm just gonna work my way through and see how far we get so at the beginning of the folder I've got recipes so I've got recipes allergy details and risk assessment cleaning schedule fridge temperature checks, supplier list, quotes and invoices, um, which is for like weddings or very large cakes, like over a hundred pounds I would do a proper invoice for, and cake order care information and receipt slash traceability. So if something goes wrong, you know where you're getting your ingredients from. So you have to keep all the receipts, um, certificates and insurance and an order log. So we're gonna start with recipes. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'm just going to show you some examples. So this is so that if someone inquires about a booking, I know exactly what is in the item that they want me to make. So for example, we've got chocolate brownies. So here it's got all of the ingredients that it has in it. So I can look through that and go, say, for instance, they had a nut allergy. It's common that maybe the chocolate might contain nuts. It's unlikely that um, the like stalk and the plain flour will and the eggs obviously and um, so you would look through and you might say right cocoa powder and the chocolate and then you would look on your packets and make sure that they are nut free so that's the way that it makes it easier um, and they want it to be as easy to read as possible so that's my cupcake one you mix everything together in the bowl so you can see that the instructions are quite short and again it's got all the ingredients listed and they're all in the same format and when they came around, they said that is perfect. Um, some people literally print off recipes from Google. All I did was copy and pasted any from Google, if they are from Google, um, because then it means you don't have all the advertisements and all of the rubbish, basically, around your recipe that kind of clogs it up. It means that you can look at it and it's literally in black and white and they're just simple to read and they're all the same. So yeah. You just want it to be simple, easy. So they liked that. And then in the next part, so you've got all your recipes in one section. So I do gluten free and vegan as well. So they're in there. So then I can see what ingredients are in those. And then I have this allergen list. So I'm gonna bring this up on my computer as well. Um, but I have this list in with my recipes and then it means that I can look down and I can say, right, the Victoria sponge contains milk, other forms of dairy, which would be like butter, um, eggs, doesn't contain soya, doesn't contain coconut, it has no nuts in it, and it contains wheat and gluten. So you can just look on this list and it's so easy to see. And then I've also just got a sticker, which is the allergy stickers that I use. So I'm hoping you can see that there. Um, so you put this on your order boxes. It should be on every single order. Obviously, if you forget, you can't do anything about that. But as long as you've told the customer what the allergies are and made sure that they have none when you place the order, which is what I do. I always get it in writing that there's either no allergies or there's a nut allergy, because then if they ever tried to say I didn't ask, then it's in writing. Um, but obviously try to remember to always put these on because then it means that if they did give it to someone who they didn't think was going to eat it when they booked and they said there was no allergies, then they know what's in it. So then they know that they're giving them something that they're not going to be allergic to. So yeah, always try to remember those. And then I've got a little risk assessment on the back, which just says what you do in these occasions. So are you aware you must notify customers of the allergens contained in your produce? So customers are asked any allergies at the time of booking and in writing, every customer receives a full allergen information in the form of a label, which is that. So it's just a risk assessment to say what you would do if something happened. So it gives you those like questions and scenarios. It says, do you have training on food allergies? Yes, completed um, the 
Food Standards Agency course on So and So Day. So it's pretty standard. But I'm going to bring this up on my computer, so I'll put this on the screen. I'm sat on my computer so that I can bring up all my spreadsheets. So where are we? Here is the allergen list. It doesn't have the sulfur di dioxide on it because I did this after. Um, so oh, that was close. I nearly just spilt my tea all over my paperwork. Right, so I'm hoping you can all read this. So it's just got any alternatives that I can use. So for example, I use a like unbranded, just standard chocolate for my cake pops. So I've put on here that the chocolate used may contain nuts, may contain because it isn't a nut product, but because of the factories that it's produced in, it may contain, so you have to know the difference. Um, so I have on here that it may contain nuts and then I've also put that a nut free alternative can be used so it means I can look through this sheet I can say it does contain nuts but I can just swap out the chocolate for something that is nut free so that is the allergen sheet it's pretty simple um, yeah you just write down all your recipes if you have a new recipe just add it on the bottom and reprint the sheet and then you've got it in your folder or um, that's more if someone's going to come and inspect, um, but you don't necessarily need a paper copy because after you've had your inspection, as long as you're keeping your um, like computer records up to date, then it's fine. So that is the allergen spreadsheet. Um, now we're going to show the cleaning schedule. So this is already in the Safer Food Better business. Um, if you haven't watched my other video about my inspection, I was told that I didn't need the Safe Food Better business, so I didn't look it or fill it out or anything. And then I decided when my like anxiety kicked in, I was like, I'm just going to fill it out just in case she forgets that she told me that I don't need it. And then she asked for it and I don't have it. So I did it anyway. And it actually has like the cleaning schedule kind of form in it, but I created all my own spreadsheets. So I'm just going to show you these for example, um, but it's very similar to the ones that you'll find in the Safe Food Bet business. So this is the cleaning schedule. So you just put down all the steps that you do and your method for doing it, how often you do it. And I've got a little date in the end column, which you'll be able to see here. So I just write down when it was last cleaned. This is in pen. So, and because it's in like a plastic wallet, I can just wipe that off. And then it means that if I wanted to have a quick look, I can go right, all the surfaces will wipe down on so-and-so date. So it means that you're not printing off a new one every time by writing on the actual paper. So the method, for example, um, wiping all work surfaces. So I've put baking days before and after baking because I always wipe down any surfaces that I'm using before just in case, you know, someone in your family has cooked on it and then it's dirty so it's always good to wipe it down before as well so I've got one remove any food from the surface like if there's any crumbs get rid of that first then wash with a clean cloth and rinse with clean water and then spray disinfectant um, it's quite common now there's quite a range but all of the disinfectants that comply with British standards which basically means with everything going on currently that they will kill um, germs related to like viruses and like colds so they're making them slightly different now um, so a lot of them say on the back that you need to leave it on the surface for a certain amount of time which I was asked when I had my phone call with my health inspector she said do you know how long to leave it on for um, I already would leave it on and then go and wash up and come back so I didn't know the actual time, but she said it's on the back of the bottle. So just make sure you check because some of them vary. Mine is one to three minutes, which I do anyway because I leave it on the surface and do other things. But some of them are 20 seconds. So I know the one in Aldi is 20 seconds. So I definitely recommend that just because it's quicker. Um, but yeah, make sure you read the back of the bottle because it will tell you how long it needs to be left on for. So it's literally just a step-by-step -step guide on what you do and like how you clean the surfaces. 
So like with the sink, it's like remove any food scraps, wipe down the sink with a clean cloth, then disinfect with a clean cloth and leave to dry. So there's like little steps to it. So as you can see, I've got, I'll go like slowly so you can kind of see. Um, so what's another example? Clean inside and outside of oven. So I've got this on daily, fortnightly. So what I do is wash and disinfect the inside of the oven, particularly any spillages. If there's no spillages, then I just wipe down the handle, wipe down the front and then leave the inside because if there's no spillages, there's nothing to wipe up. And then every two weeks I give it a deep clean where I scrub the inside, make sure that there's no like leftovers and I scrub the shelves as well. So yeah usually there's like a couple of steps when you do your deep cleans and when you do your just daily cleans so there will be a difference so yeah i have the common i have the columns for weekly fortnightly daily so that is my cleaning schedule then i personally wanted to have this just as an added one so i have a list like this i actually haven't updated this i need to add in um a date but it's got deep cleans of oven, fridge, microwave, sink and floors. So I mop the floor and then I do a deep clean of all those appliances. So it's weekly or fortnightly depending how many orders I have. So last week was like fairly normal. This weekend is really, really busy. So I did a deep clean um, yesterday. So I wiped all the floors, sinks, all that jazz. So yeah I need to write that in but it just means that I have a log of when I last did like a serious deep clean because all the days merge into one at the moment so sometimes when you're thinking I know that I clean the oven it's like yeah but when did you last clean it so especially with like however many orders you have it's good to keep a log of dates so that is all the cleaning stuff then we have temperature checks so you have to keep a log of temperatures I've got my little thermometer here to show you an example but as you can see um it's not compulsory that you've done this from the start if you haven't already i only realized that we had to do this um as you can tell on the 12th of august so and i've been trading since june but she was happy with this when she came to inspect me so you just have before baking after baking so you can either do this literally before you start whether that's in the evening or in the morning i usually check in the morning and then in the evening no matter what time i'm baking just because one you forget um, and then you might have already started baking before then and two you're still storing products in the fridge so like butter um eggs chocolate stuff like that so i think it's good to check the temperature in the morning because then you know that throughout the whole day it's been a correct temperature so the ideal is between three and five i think fridges at the most um should be eight because obviously on a hot day, it's likely that it's going to be higher. Like I've had the odd day where it's gone just above five. Um, there was one day in July where it was six degrees because we had a heat wave. So obviously every time you open the fridge, it's really struggling to stay cold. Um, but yeah, as long as you record that and they can see that you're recording it, it's fine. Just as, as an example, uh, this is a little thermometer that I have. You can buy anyone like mine were all like two pound or three pound from ebay nothing crazy and it's just a little hanging one so it does stand up in the fridge or you can clip that up there and if you have any racks in your fridge then you can hook it on and it will like hang from that and yeah it just tells you the temperature and you can go on to this button and press minimum so the minimum it has been is um 0 0.5 like positive 0 0.5 and then the max is 22.5, which is my room. Um, but yeah, so it means that if you are checking in the morning and then in the evening, you can check what the min and max is to see whether that day it's actually gone down throughout the day when you weren't checking it. So yeah, it's good to have one of these. I have one in my fridge, one in my parents' fridge, and then I have one in the freezer because I make cake pops. So I'm constantly putting stuff in and out of the freezer. So it's good to know what your freezer temperature is. Um, then... So that's all temperatures then we are on to supplies list this is another thing that isn't essential i just think it's good to know um 
and it's pretty simple um it, you know it takes a couple of minutes to write down so obviously if you buy from wholesalers this is another good thing to write down because then at least you know where you're getting your ingredients from but i've just got basic ingredients eg sugar butter is supermarkets mainly tesco's and aldi then i've got cake boxes and boards cake decorating company online order that's where i buy them i buy them in packs of five or ten and then like however many i need so i would say that that's bulk and then grease proof paper and cake tin liners is ebay because i buy them in like 100 packs of six inch cake tin liners so then they're already cut for me i don't have to worry about it then sprinkles is either supermarkets or baking time club because they're really good for being completely allergen free so they are an online store they're also i found them on instagram so they're gluten free vegan dairy free kosher and halal yeah so they pretty much cover all bases um they're reasonably priced and it just means that rather than buying 20 different sprinkles and having to check the ingredients you know already that they're vegan gluten free and they don't have any like gelatin or anything in them so yeah it's i find it's just easier to buy ones that are allergen friendly then bulk items which can sometimes be like um my flour i get on amazon sometimes and that is a 17 kg bag so i put occasionally amazon sometimes it's not then logo items order book cards so i know that's not an actual supplier in terms of ingredients but i just put it on there so i remember so i've got order book cards is etsy and then i've just put free range eggs which is our rescue hens because we have them in our garden so i don't source my eggs from the shop which also kind of helps in my favour because I know that they're fresh. Whereas when you get eggs, by the time you get them from the shop, they're already about a week old. Whereas I know, and I date all my boxes so that I know when the dates are on them and like how long they've been in the fridge, stuff like that. So I showed her all of that. So if you do have your own hens, then just make sure you're labelling the boxes with dates that you took the eggs out of the like pen or house or wherever you store your chickens um so yeah and then you can just log the dates of the eggs that's all i do i just write the date on the box and they were happy with that so that's everything for suppliers then what are we on to so i'm not going to bring this up because it has got personal details on it so i will just cover what do i need to cover <laughs> just to make sure that i am not like putting any details out so I'm going to try and cover this as best as possible um so you can kind of see it's a quote um and it's just got like the price my logo um i'm obviously covering the customer's name but it's for a wedding and it just says the price the wedding day cost of samples um my bank details um my phone number and the sample collection date as well as the actual wedding planned wedding date um and then the details of what the order is so i just have that in there so that like any invoices in there just so that any larger orders are um in like paper form and then all of my other orders i'll get onto because i keep them in a spreadsheet um but yeah i just like to print off the quotes for the bigger orders so that when because they're in two years like that one's in two years time i could forget so i like to have the invoice so that i remember about the samples and everything um so yes then we have cake care so this isn't essential to have in here i just thought i'd print it out so that i've got a copy it was so that i could show the inspector what i was telling customers when they come and collect a cake so it just says when transporting your cake home make sure the aircon is on to keep the car cool obviously if it is a freezing cold day this isn't essential just don't have the heating on um and then it says the cake should be placed on a flat surface either the footwell or an empty boot do not place the cake on a seat or someone's lap as this could cause the cake to topple over please drive carefully as i no longer hold responsibility for the cake once it's left me and then once collected the cake should be kept in a cool place i'd recommend the fridge where it can be kept until needed so it just means that if she says do you have like a contingency for if someone comes back 
um, and says like, this has happened to my cake, I can say, well, these are the details that I give to all my customers so they know how they should be handling the cake. So this is my traceability. I have like my Tesco's order. I've got all my receipts. They're all put into categories and stapled together. So I've got like all the range receipts, all B&M receipts stapled together. This is one for traceability so that if someone had an allergy and they tried to sue you, you could prove that you know where your ingredients are coming from and you have a record of products that are coming in and you could reasonably prove that that cake that they had on that date matched up to these ingredients so some people keep a whole sheet where they say you know this product this batch number um relates to this bake i don't do that um because i was told that we don't need to um but fingers crossed that doesn't happen and i don't need to do that so that is all of those is there any other spreadsheets i think the next one is my accounts one so I've just got a little printout of my certificates, which I'll show you on the screen because they're in better quality. Um, not that one here. So my food safety and hygiene. So as you can see, it's CPD certified. It's approved as an e-learning course because obviously certain companies might be offering it and they're not certified like as a government body that can be offering that course. So this was completed on the 5th of June before I started trading. Um, ideally, that's what you should be doing. Um, you should have this before you start trading so that you know that you're aware of all the, reg all the regulations, all of the allergen information um, in terms of like how to cook food, because depending on what you're serving, whether it's meat, you need to make sure that it's all cooked thoroughly. Um, so yeah, those are the certificates. Um, let me this is i've just got a copy of the inspection sheet um so it just has like my details her details and what the inspection was for so it's just kitchen preparation room hygiene and allergy training food safety system and it like ticks that i'm in compliance with that and it's just proof that i've had the inspection then i've got insurance documents so i just have a printout of my insurance so that she can see i'm insured um, so the trade in business is cake maker and decorator, it's public liability insurance, it's £12 a month and it's from the 30th of June this year to the 29th of June next year and it's up to a million pounds so that means if I get sued for an allergen issue or um, like anything to do with my baking then I'm covered. Um, so yeah it's good to have insurance. And then this is my order list. So this is, these are my actual orders, um, like roughly up to date. Um, and I've just taken out the person's name and the amount. Um, so yeah, it's just an example for you. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. So it's got the month. So I've just got June, July, etc. Then I've got the order. So it's a basic description of what it is. I have order forms and um like more detailed notes of what each bake is so i don't need it in here it's just a rough idea then i would have the person's name the required date not the date that the order was placed and i have them all in order so that if someone placed an order and it was like a pre-order that they're all in the right order from when they need to be made to like future orders if that makes sense then i've got the amount so you would just put the total of the order then i've got paid in full so i either tick yes or like for example down below there's someone that is paying on a specific date then there is someone that's paid a deposit but the remaining balance isn't due yet and then yeah so you you tick if it's yes and then like there's na because i made a cake for my brother so that was like no payment needed um but yeah so then we have delivery or collection. So I put all the details in there. If I have a time, then I put it on there. And then obviously I message people to get times for collections and tell them when it's being delivered, but I don't necessarily update this because it's not essential. As long as it says whether it's being delivered or collected, that's fine. And then in the end column, I just have allergies. Um, so it's got anything. So if it's vegan, I've put it in there. If it's gluten-free, it's in there. 
so hazelnut and then one was coconut another gluten-free one and then vegan so yeah it just shows what the orders are and it's a list of all the orders so i have a printout of it um so what i'll do is at the end of october i'll print this out again so that it's up to date so yes that is simple um i'm going to do this safer food better business in a minute um i'm gonna quickly show you a few more forms before i get onto that because that will probably be the last thing that we do because it will take a little while so this is the spreadsheet that you need to fill out in order to register so i've taken all my details out of here or like anything personal but this is the form for my council um so your reference catering license so you put your name email um telephone numbers um then you put in your address then on the next page it's the address of the business um if it's a different address then write a different address if it is the same then you just put that it's the same and i think you still fill it out again then you have the food business operator which is the owner so that is me so again i put in the same address as before because it is all the same i'm based at home so depending on whether you have a separate premises you would fill that out then here you tick what your business is so i am a private house used for food because i cater for other people so i've ticked catering and i've ticked a private house because i am not i i assume that that's the right one she was happy with that um but yeah just pick the closest thing to what you are and like a restaurant and cafe means that you have a space for people to eat whereas i don't so i am a private house that doesn't allow anyone in um because there's a question about that next uh, is it a new business so you type in when you plan to open and then the number of people engaged in the business so i have no um like employees so you put zero to ten and then on the end page it's just your name and then i'm the individual because i am the person registering and it's in my name if that makes sense i'm registering for myself so you put individual to prove that you are registering for you you're not registering on behalf of someone else then you just put the date and then you send it off it's as easy as that so that is that um and then what else these are my daily checks so i just have these i copied these from the safe food better business it's just a list of all the checks that you should be doing um so yeah you can list these down if you want to pause and list them down they're pretty standard ones the only thing i added in was fridge temperatures because um obviously that needs to be done opening and closing and then these are just my recipes but in a spreadsheet um like a word document form and then i think oh we wanted to go on to here um I've been recording for ages. I'm sorry if this is really long. I'm just hoping that it's useful for people. So this is where you would go to register. So it is the food.gov.uk. Um, but you put your postcode in here. Um, and then I can't do it because I've already done it, as I said. But you'll get that form that I just went through. You'll fill all that out. And then you will send it off to your council. So it's on the GovUK website and the address is up here so it is food hyphen business hyphen registration so yeah it's the food standards agency that you go to and there's just some details here which is what i mentioned in one of my other videos which where i said that you want to register as soon as possible but if you didn't know that you need to register then just do it like now Whereas some people say, do I need to do it 28 days before opening, which is what you should do. Um, but like I did, I didn't know I had to register. And two weeks before I planned to start trading is when I registered. So obviously I couldn't give it 28 days notice. I gave it 14 because I didn't realise. Um, but it's not like I was trading for six months and then I registered. So avoid trading before. Um, so yeah, it does say there so that kind of backs up what i was saying the other day because it does say 
Um, if you're already if you are already trading and you haven't registered, just do it as soon as possible. So yeah, and then there's some details here if who needs to register. Um, so that is that website. That is the Gov UK website. This is the um, food allergen course that I did. This is a free one on the Food Standards Agency. So again, this is the URL at the top. Um, you can just copy that and I'm sure you'll find it. I will try and put a link in the description just in case people can't find it. But there are six modules and then at the bottom bit here is download certificate. Um, I can download it because I've completed it. You have to get, I think it's 100% on everything. Yeah, I think it's 100% on everything. Um, and then once that is done, this download certificate will appear. Um, until you get that pass mark, it won't appear and you can't download it. So, yeah, but it's free. It's easy. Um, might as well do it, even though you're not necessarily required to. The only one you're required to have is the level two food safety and hygiene, which is this one. So I did mine through this website. It's called food-safety.org.uk and it was £10 plus VAT. You get a certificate. And it takes three to four hours. Mine took about three because there is a lot of information that you need to read through. Um, so as you can see below, it is certified by CPD. Um, I don't know what that is, but it's R-O-S-P-A, I think. So yeah, it's approved by the environmental health officers. So it means that if you complete this, if you complete this and then you show your inspector this, they will agree that it's like legitimate because certain websites might be charging for this course and it's not a proper course like it, the content might be fine but if it's not um certified then it can't be used if that makes sense it's a bit like if you did like a uni course online and it wasn't by a certified body then it wouldn't be recognized as a uni qualification that's just a bad example but you know what i mean so that is the website for the food hygiene um so yeah now we've got the safe food better business i have been going on for ages so far so i think this safer food better business is a whole thing in its own um so i might have to split this video into two parts but this is the booklet i will try and find the link because i downloaded this for free some people are buying it for like 15 pounds on amazon this is the November 2019 one. I was told that that is completely fine by my health officer. Um, and yeah, people are buying it for £15 and you can just print it off. So yeah, definitely be aware. So there's lots of information pages, you know, about um, safe methods and food hygiene ratings, hand washing hygiene, um, cross-contamination, and then there's some pages to fill out. So these are the ones that I'm gonna briefly go through. Um, so there's a safety point, why and how do you do this? So it says, for example, um, maybe have a good one. Work clothes should be appropriate for staff duties and protect food from contamination. Work clothes should minimise skin coming into contact with food and prevent hairs, fibres, contents of pockets, etc. So it says, describe your staff's work clothes here. So I put clean trousers slash jeans and a clean t-shirt. Um, and then lower down, I put aprons, hair neck, gloves. Um, so yeah, that is an example. So it's kind of like the point that they're trying to make, then why it's important for that to be done and then you put what you do so you can either put yes i agree with that or no and i do it this way so you just kind of explain your practices and that's pretty much the whole thing if you want me to go through this in detail i will happily go through it and literally tell you all of my answers so that you can understand what kind of answers they're looking for but i must say my health officer she looked at it but she didn't like turn the page and read it if that makes sense so she looked and went good you're using the safe food better business but she didn't actually look through it but again every health officer will be different so it's better to fill it out in 
good written language rather than like yeah no you know you want to be writing like full sentences and explaining your point and like how you do things um so yeah you want to fill it out properly but i can't guarantee that they're necessarily going to read it um but yeah and there's information on like food allergies so it's how do you do this so how do you prepare foods for allergenic customers so you write down what you do so i put that they're kept in a different place um the ingredients that contain nuts are kept in a different place and i only create one allergenic allergenic allergic order a day so if someone orders something and they have a nut allergy i won't make anything else that day because i don't have enough surfaces to guarantee that it won't be contaminated so i'll wait until that order is collected before i then start the next one um so yeah that is the pack there is loads so yeah if you want me to go through that in detail let me know because i will happily go through the whole thing and go through my answers i see a lot of people saying they're really confused with it and not to sound like blunt or like stuck up because that's not the way i mean it um but i took about 15 minutes to write this out maybe 10 15 and i found it very easy but that's just me um but i have seen a lot of people saying that it's very confusing they don't know what applies to them so that's why i'm happy to go through it because i know a lot of people are finding it very confusing a lot of it isn't relevant a lot of it is to do with running a restaurant which i don't so a lot of it i just put na or i didn't even print the page out I went through it online, printed out any pages that were relevant to me, and then just didn't print out the rest. So yeah, I don't think you need to worry too much about the safe food bear business because a lot of it isn't relevant. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly show you my order book. I got this off Etsy, I'll put the link below. Um, but this is what it looks like. So it's got order number, date, name, address, contact, order type, so what it is flavour, size, toppings, message if there is one, um, and then delivery or collection, date and time and the cost and I absolutely love it, it's so so handy. I only recently got it so that's why I have the order log so I'm going to be using this from now on. Then I have this diary, you don't need this but I just have it. Um, so it's just a month diary so this is October so I cross off every day and I put in um, like collection this morning, eight inch cake. So then I know, but again, you don't need that many diaries because I love writing everything down. So, and then if anyone's wondering, this is what you get on, you obviously don't get it in a frame, um, but this is what you get after your inspection. You get it on the day. I didn't think you did. I thought maybe you had to wait for it to arrive, but you do get it on the day um, and it's sticky on this side. So you have to stick it to something, which is why I put it to a frame because the back of it isn't sticky. So you can't stick it like on the wall or something. It's to go on a window ideally. So that's why I've put it on here. So yes, and then I've just got my business sticker on there because I thought that it went well. Then um, I have this stuck to my fridge, which is my opening and closing check. So that's where I keep it, it's laminated. So I just attach it to the side of my fridge and then I can be reminded of it every day. And then I'd recommend these. I have a whiteboard. So I've just got what I need to be doing tonight. Um, so 15 cake pops, cupcakes, more cupcakes, more cake pops. And then I've put how many batches of like cupcakes I need to make because I use cupcake mix to make the cake pops as well. So yeah, it's just to write any notes on, so that's useful. And then I also have a plan of my week, which I keep in the kitchen because these diaries are obviously sort of put away. So this is right in front of me and it's got a whole plan of the week so I can plan out every single day. Um, so yeah, that is everything that I have. Um, so yeah, if you want me to go through the Safer Food Better Business, please let me know. I'm hoping this was helpful. Let me know down below if you're awaiting inspection. So yeah, as I was saying, because my camera cut out again, because I'm talking for way too long, um yeah if you have any questions please don't hesitate to comment down below i've had a couple of people say that they're awaiting inspection and they're really nervous so please don't be nervous and let me know if there's anything i've missed or just any random questions you want to know because i know that when i was getting inspected i wanted to know loads of random things that i'd heard 
from other people because there's so much going around, especially in like cake forums and stuff on what is the correct way. So I'm just giving you like my honest experience and what I had to have prepared and hopefully it will be helpful for you. So yes, if you did like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want me to go through the Safe Food Better business, then let me know and make sure you hit the bell so that you get notified when that video goes up. So yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.